yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I think we definitely look strange because mm -hmm. we were yeah as I said we were working with our <laughs> big back backpacks yeah so like your backpacker you like backpackers but we were the only backpackers <laughs> that were working so it's yeah uh, Nicolo you have been in Cambodia and you have uh, working for Cambodian uh, around nine months already I mean uh, uh, basically you are in Asia and specifically in Cambodia for nine months and you exactly. work for yeah you work for Cambodian Asia around nine months mm -hmm. already exactly. and so j just tell me why you decided after you study in Belgium or maybe in Europe and then you come and and intern in Cambodia and specifically yes. in uh, uh, for, uh, with Cambodian Asia. Sorry. Yes. So um, yes, I was um, I became a journalist in Belgium after finishing my studies, and then I wanted a new challenge and to find a job. So I was uh, looking for a job, but outside Europe because I wanted a different kind of experience. And uh, as I grew up in the Asian, um, in the Chinatown, I would say of Paris, I was really interested in Asian cultures. And uh, I had a friend who was Cambodian, and he told me about Cambodia, so I was really curious about it. So I started looking for some jobs and inter internships and opportunities. And uh, I heard about Cambodianess, uh, a, a friend journalist to told me about it. So I sent a message and then I arrived uh, and I, in Cambodia and I worked for Cambodianess. So what do you do for Cambodian Nest, I mean, uh, Cambodian Nest online news. Uh, what do you do? I mean, you write article and what kind of article that you have uh, written for uh, during your nine months yes. stay in Cambodia? Yes, so I arrived in uh, December and I stayed until uh, April or, or yeah, the middle of April in, uh, in Phnom Penh. And I was writing article for Cambodian Nest. And so at the beginning, it was really challenging really difficult to write articles because it was a, a new city, a new country and a new language for me and I didn't... A new language? You mean you write in English? Yeah, exactly. It was the first time I was writing and working in English, but especially the, the challenge and difficulty, it was uh, Khmer and the fact that I don't speak Khmer. So I had to be original on fact, you know, like subjects I could do just by speaking English. So what I did is uh, I covered a lot of international events like uh, cultural festival, fest some festivals of culture, of uh, cinema, for example, and uh, some diplomatic meetings that happened in Phnom Penh. And then I just started to write a lot about society, economy, and uh, every subject I could do in English, I tried to do. So, when you have been in Cambodia for around, let's say, six months, seven months, yes. nine months already, and then you did a lot of uh, story about Cambodia, about cultural, about culture, yes. about history, about uh, festival or something, do you fall in love uh, with uh, Cambodian history <laughs> uh, in general? Yeah, yeah. But f first of all, I was really interested in the country background and the difficult history, but also really challenging uh, uh, and rich uh, recent history, I would say, because also I did some studies in history, so I whole, always had a little, a little interest in it. And yeah, I fall in love, I would say, uh, with the people and uh, the way of doing things in Cambodia. And uh, yeah, it was really relaxing, a relaxing time. and. Uh, and I found, uh, I found that the society was really interesting as a journalist, that there was a lot of things to say and things to see. And now, today, I <laughs> have a chance to meet you in Siem Reap, here in the small office of uh, Cambodian Nest exactly. of uh, Tmai Tmai in Siem Reap. And I heard that you visited already temples and then you discovered uh, many parts of uh, Siem Reap already. So tell me about Siem Reap. My question uh, is a very large, very yes. broad, a little bit. Yes. So uh, first time I went to Siem Reap, it was for the New Year Eve, because I went here to cover all the celebrations about uh, the New Year. And I really fell in love with the city, because especially after being in uh, Phnom Penh, 
I liked Cambodia, but Phnom Penh was more challenging and was difficult for me because it was really crowded and really noisy sometimes. So I didn't really like the city. So when I discovered Team Web, I immediately liked our, um, I would say, uh, our quiet it was and uh, there was more space and more easy to live in a, da in a daily life, I would say. Uh, so when I heard that the, a new office was opening here, I wanted to <laughs> come here to, to work and to spend uh, some more time. And also, yeah, uh, the first time I went to the temples, it was in, uh, at the end of January. And it was an amazing experience. I was really amazed by uh, how, more, how many temples there are and uh, how, how good they are restored. So I really liked it and I wanted to to go again, but to spend more time in, in the temples, you know, to, to get to know them. Mm -hmm. So I went back here for one month to to work as a as a freelance journalist and to write some articles at my at my path and uh, and I took a, a monthly pass to discover the temple so I could go there once every one or two days and uh, and get to see each temple and spend some time in it so do you 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 get amazed by only temple stone or maybe by the environment uh, i mean the environment mm -hmm. of uh, uncle archaeological yeah. size of course everything is a uh, is a whole i would say like everything is connected on the, the fact that there is still like the jungle the forest it's really enriching but i would say that me personally the temples it's uh, itself are really, are really, are really amazing. The, the story of stone. Yeah, I the mean, story I mean. of stone and the sites and the, the incredible architecture. It's uh, it's what, uh, it's what uh, amazes me. So uh, food food in Siem Reap uh, <laughs> uh, made you, I mean, make you happy? <laughs> yes, yes. I had a little bit more challenging uh, experience with the food in Cambodia and in Siem Reap because I'm vegetarian. So for me it was a little bit more difficult to find food mm -hmm. but still i was amazed by the number of uh, really good uh, restaurants in simweb uh, so i still had a really good time uh, by enjoying food here <laughs> so how is about the uh, kulin mountain and the lake have you have yeah. you visited already or i didn't went to kulin mountain because i didn't have the occasion but i went to tonle sap twice and actually yesterday i went back uh, with my mother to, to show us uh, the lake and uh, I, I really liked it and I really liked the mangrove especially it was uh, it was it's what I liked the most so when you I mean when you are when when you jump in Asia specifically in Cambodia but mm -hmm. you don't stay you don't stay uh, for nine months in Cambodia you travel around yes. around uh, Cambodia Thai Laos and Vietnam Mm -hmm. So, what uh, interests me is that sometimes uh, you drive motorbike, sometimes you you walk from one place to another place. Yes. Uh, and why you decide? I mean, you decided to drive a motorbike from one country to another country, or from one place to another place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you walk. Yes. So yeah, actually, after four months in Cambodia and in Phnom Penh. I wanted to discover the other countries and it was like my initial goal. My initial goal was to come here to work and then to do a big travel. and uh, Like adventure. Yeah, like an adventure, exactly. And to discover the other uh, countries of Southeast Asia. But I wanted to do, you know, like like a circle to to leave from Cambodia, do the other countries and then come back to Cambodia. And um, actually in Phnom Penh, um, I, I lived with a roommate who became my friend and uh, we both wanted to travel in Southeast Asia. So we had the, the idea to go together and we wanted to, to do motorbike because we were doing motorbikes in uh, in Phnom Penh, actually, because in Phnom Penh you cannot live in Phnom Penh without a motorbike. So I learned how to do motorbike, especially in Phnom Penh. And uh, so we went to, to Vietnam. It was uh, for one month. And uh, we did the motorbike for 10 days. Uh, From Phnom Penh to uh, Vietnam, or maybe you, you took a bus and then... Yeah, we took a bus from Phnom Penh to, Sa to Saigon, to Chimineville. And from there, we, we, we bought a motorbike there. 
on from there we went to Oi An in a uh, in motorbike. So the inside Vietnam you use a motorbike. Exactly. From exactly. one place to another from place. From one place to another Can place. Can you tell me from where to where in Vietnam you did your motorbike? We were we went to different places but uh, we went to the coast and uh, then we went in the mountains uh, to Plaku, uh, I think it was the name, and then we went mm -hmm. to Oi An on the coast, and, uh, in the middle of Vietnam. So we, yeah, I would say we did like the the half bottom of. Uh, so after the, Vietnam, you went to Thailand and Laos. Yeah, uh, firstly to Laos, and so that was our initial goal was then to get to Laos, and from Laos we did something a little bit special. We had this dream of doing like a big walk towards Southeast Asia. Big walk? A big walk, yeah. Just oh. walking okay. and we had this idea and we still had two months left to travel. So the, those were the months of May and June. And we had this crazy idea of uh, <laughs> doing this uh, walk by which, by going from one capital city to another. So what we did, we left from Vientiane, the capital of Laos, and we wanted to go all the way to Phnom Penh. Phnom Penh. To Phnom Penh in Cambodia, yeah. We wanted to cross by all by, the by by foot. By foot, just by walking every day. Yeah. So that was a great, uh, a little bit crazy idea, and we also wanted just to follow the Mekong River, as it is as uh, the river. So you you two. walk with your friend. And so I walked with my friend. Yeah. We were just and, the and two of uh, us. So uh, when and where and how, where to eat and uh, yeah. where to sleep. To sleep, yeah. So that was a challenge, uh, actually. So we had some hammocks that we could place uh, between trees or between hammocks, some yeah. hammocks yeah, yeah. if we needed to. But the f main mainly thing we did to, to be hosted was to go to the temples. Because we had heard that some temples could host some travelers. Temple or pagodas? Temple. Okay. Yeah, temple, sometimes pagodas, but uh, mainly temples. So you did the two months? So we did two months, yeah, actually 50, from Vientiane 50 days yeah. uh, to Phnom Penh. Exactly. And so we went from Vientiane and we worked during two weeks in Laos. Then we crossed the border to the Thai side in Thailand and we continued to follow the Mekong. And then we stopped to follow the Mekong because it was too long to do it. So it, it would take too much time. So we crossed the land from Thailand to the Cambodian border. And then from the Cambodian border, we walked until Phnom Penh. So tell me, what challenges uh, have you faced during your mm. uh, your journey? I mean, during this adventure, yeah, we faced, of course, many challenges. The, the main one, the two main ones, as you said, was to find uh, a place to to stay to, and to, to sleep to in sleep. every night. And so, to eat also, maybe? Yeah, to eat actually it wasn't that much difficult because there was always a little restaurant, a little street food, uh, a little street food spot that you can uh, eat in, so... But to sleep, uh, why? It, yeah, it, it, to, it was difficult, To sleep why? it was difficult because sometimes on the map you're really far away from a lot of places and uh, and especially because we had to find a place every night, so every night we had to be near a temple or near a pagoda. But actually it was uh, really easy in Laos, because in Laos there was a lot of temples. In Thailand also, but in Thailand we also hosted a lot uh, in some homestays or little hotels when we found them. And in Cambodia we did a, a mix of both. So sometimes it was difficult when we were in, I would say, in a really natural place, far away from the cities. And sometimes when we were near the big woods, it was okay because there was always a temple. So when you walk, yes. you walk along the national road or you just go through a small road or mm -hmm. something in each place to another? It actually depended on uh, what was the more direct road to do. Sometimes we had little little roads, little countryside roads, I would say, and that was the most pleasant Woods because it was easy to walk in. We were in the mid middle of the countryside and the nature, so it was really nice. And sometimes we didn't really have the choice to take the national roads. It, it wasn't like a, a highway, but it was mm -hmm. national roads, 
and we had to take them sometimes because it was a more direct way to go from one city to another, for example. So sometimes we took them, but we were always on the side, so not on the road, so it wasn't too, too dangerous. So when you walk, not alone, but with your friend, yes. but you were two people, two yes. person only. Exactly. And maybe you look strength for people, I mean for local people along your journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, I think we definitely look strange because we were, yeah, as I said, we were working with our big back, backpacks. Yeah, so like your backpacker. We like backpackers, but we were the only backpackers <laughs> that were working, so it, yeah. everyone was really surprised. Hey, we are not. Just pretty heavy, yeah. Okay. I would say um, 10 kilos. Yeah. So, so it, you, they, uh, I mean, they look to you very yeah, strange. <laughs> everyone looked at us, but not in an aggressive way, I would say. They were just really surprised. And sometimes it was okay when we were near big cities, like, uh, and especially in Thailand, because I think they're more used to foreign people. But sometimes in Laos, for example, when we were really deep in the countryside, or also <laughs> in Cambodia, sometimes people were really surprised because they didn't expect us to see us. But most of the time they were really nice, and a lot of people offered us some water, some water, food, sometimes maybe. food, and a lot of people also when we went next to the big roads. Uh, sometimes some cars stopped okay. to to propose to help us, and uh, they were asking us if we wanted a ride to another city, stuff like that. So but we didn't want yeah. to. We wanted to keep. So working. it means they 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 did talk to you, and you yeah, you yeah. did talk to them also. Exactly, yeah. To some people, you did not have any problem. No, we didn't have any problem. We had some challenges sometimes. I, I would say like on the whole 50 days like maybe three or four nights that we had some problems to find a place to stay and uh, that we and then some people in the villages called like the chief of the village to just to come and talk to, come, with you, to talk with you us that, exactly yeah. to understand because they was a, a little bit scared sometimes it, but it happened just two or three times mm -hmm. so it was okay and we always and they had found a place to sleep and yeah and to explain the, our reason, the reason of our presence to the people. And, and yeah. were you afraid of uh, doing that, for example, if uh, you arrive in mm -hmm. a place and where it is night, for example, and yeah. you were afraid or never? I was afraid just two times because normally the thing is that we wanted to avoid that it would get dark and that it would be at night when we arrive in a place so we always arrived like before you know like at okay. 4 or 5 p.m before the night so we would have the time to find a, a place to, to stay so but it happened twice that we arrived at night and i was a little bit scared and the other the two other scary thing i would say is that there was sometimes the big roads when there was a lot of cars and also sometimes the, the dogs because uh, sometimes the dogs when they see strangers <laughs> like this they were afraid so they were barking a lot and sometimes i was a little bit uh, afraid of aggressive okay. dogs especially in thailand so how far uh, did you do for example for i mean for a walk once how, how far yeah how far uh, does you, it take? you mean by day uh, no, I mean in general, I mean uh, you, ah, yeah. you, you summarize uh, much, yeah. Yeah. a total of... In total, so our journey lasts more, more or less yeah, 50 days, maybe a little bit more, 52, 52 days. Sometimes we rested, I would say, in a total like 5 or 6 days. On the other days we walked, so every, yeah. every, you know, like 4 or 5 days we took like 1 day left to, okay. to rest. But... Um, yeah, in total, so we walked for 50 days and we in a distance of 1,000 kilometers. Kilome kilometers. Kilometer? Yeah, 1,000 kilometers. Walk? Just walking, yeah, without, so, any, without any cars or any, anything else. Did you spend else. a lot in terms of uh, financial expense? In terms of financial expense, no. I spent more with, um, with a motorbike when I was in Vietnam. Okay. But just walking in Laos, Thailand, and Cambodia, it was no. You d you don't spend that much, and especially because we were um, often uh, hosted in the temples, so we didn't pay anything. Or sometimes uh, we took uh, lunch with okay. the te okay. in the temples. 
So it was okay. We didn't spend too much uh, doing this. Okay, part. so you did around one thousand for walking. Yes. Uh, one thousand kilometer for kilometers. for walking. Yes. And for motorbike drive. Uh, motorbike, it was uh, eight hundred kilometers. So pretty much the same thing. Expect, uh, but in uh, on the motorbike, it took us like nine days, eight nine days. Okay. And by walking the same a little bit more but the same distance was fifty days. <laughs> so, so now not the same uh, now uh, you come to uh, end end of uh, your journey of uh, your trip. Exactly. So are you happy or maybe uh, are you disappointed to do that uh, that trip? Uh, no, I was really happy. I really found it what I wanted to to, to do. Uh, I, I'm happy both of my whole experience in uh, in Asia as a journalist and then as a as a backpacker, as a traveler, and really and really happy also of my travel experience, uh, the walk and the motorbike, and it was really yeah really challenging, really exciting, and I made a lot of memories. And uh, that I will remember for for my life, I think. And uh, yeah, it created me an experience. I would say to experience some difficulties of traveling. It will de definitely make me more uh, so more wise. I would yeah. say. <laughs> and then you tell your story to everyone, or maybe you just keep for you and your family, or. Yeah. Or your girlfriend. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I would say some parts I will keep for me, for yeah. myself. <laughs> yeah. But in general, I will tell about this uh, travel to my friend and to and to people, and I will definitely talk to people about uh, a Southeast Asia in general and Cambodia, as a as a really interesting country. Okay, thank you so much for your thank information you, and welcome. thank you so much for your time, uh, Nicolo. And have yes. a good day in Siem Reap. And then you, I know that you are coming back to Belgium or in Europe uh, very soon. Yes. Thank you again. Thank you, Sir Klim.